Welcome to another episode of Timmy's Top 10. And today we are going to look at the 10 most powerful non-creature artifacts in old school Magic the Gathering. Now this is my personal list, so you may not agree or agree. Curious to hear your opinion after seeing this list. Now before we start with number 10, I'd like to address the elephants in the room here, which are the Moxon and the Black Lotus. Now these artifacts are so incredibly powerful that I haven't included them into this list because if I would, the Moxon as a set would probably be on number two and Black Lotus will most likely be on number one in this list. So to keep things interesting, I haven't added these uh, artifacts to the list. So let's quickly go to number 10. On number 10, we are looking at the Black Vice. Now, this artifact reads, casting cost is one, and it reads, if opponent has more than four cards in hand during upkeep, Black Vice does one damage to opponent for each card in excess of four. Now, the reason it's on this list is because it's low cost, it's only one to cast, and it has a high potential. And what I mean by that is that it, it can inflict a lot of damage. Now, obviously, this is not guaranteed damage, and if you have an aggro deck, for instance, a lot of people play four of them in their aggro deck. And what you're hoping for is that you have it in your opening hand and that you are on the play. Personally, I play it in my goblin deck for exactly that reason. But I board it out when I'm on the draw. So then I choose other cards to put on my deck that like are more gu guaranteed to deal damage to my opponent. Then uh, this card also works really well in prison decks so decks that make sure that your opponent cannot do anything think of decks that use stasis uh, winter or maybe icy manipulator uh, a lot of land destruction so uh, decks that make sure that you cannot do anything and then you have a full hand and then the black vice can inflict a lot of damage it also works really well uh, with certain combos like uh, un underworld dreams uh, decks where there's a lot of card draw going on so black vice all in all has a lot of potential and a lot of decks where it fits in really well. I haven't even mentioned the Atog deck, for instance, because it's also a great artifact to sacrifice if you're working with any artifact sack mechanics. So that's why it's here on number 10. On number nine, we have the Mana Vault. For one mana, you can cast it and you can tap it to add three colorless mana. So that's basically why it's on this list. It's Mana Ramp. It's an instant bonus of two mana. You can also, of course, use it after you've cast it and you have, just have three mana extra your next turn. So it's a really good card. It's, it's a good card early game to kind of uh, get that tempo game uh, going for you. But it's also a good late game when you have X spells. And of course, there is this downside of when it is tapped, it deals one damage to you in your upkeep and you need to pay four mana to untap it. But most people that play Mana Vault know this, obviously, and they have some kind of sack mechanic in their deck. For instance, they combine it with Transmute Artifact or with a Sage of Latinam, or they simply take the damage because their deck is so quick. They have their opponent uh, dead already before the Mana Vault can really inflict some serious damage. So that is Mana Vault here on number nine. On number eight, we have the Tome. And I always like to refer to it as the Big Book because you also have the Smaller Brother in the Antiquities set. Well, the Big Book is four to cast and then four and tap and you may draw one card. So one extra card, it says here. And obviously it's in here because it's card advantage. That's why it's probably a staple in old school magic. You see it being used in a lot of decks. And also it's a great way to get rid of your excess mana. So um, because a lot of decks in old school play with a lot of colors they usually choose to put 24 25 lands in their decks and that means that you can have a lot of excess mana and it's just great to use that extra mana to draw extra cards this card does really well in control decks um, obviously the deck is a nice example of where it really shines so you're controlling the game and in the meantime you're kind of expanding that control you're taking use of that control by taking card advantage so really really a good card and of course it's in our top 10. On number seven, we are finding the Howling Mine, and the Howling Mine has a casting cost of two, and it reads, each player draws one extra card each turn during his or her draw phase. Now, I've written down here, deadly with a smile, and what I mean by that is usually when your opponent plays this card, the you think, oh great, I get an extra card to draw, I'm really happy, and it doesn't really look that dangerous. But the fact is that Howling Mine is one of the cheapest ways to get extra card draw going, 
And when your opponent is playing this card, they usually have a trick up their sleeve. Obviously, you can combine it Parfait style. This is one of the artifacts that you can tap and then it doesn't work anymore. So you can combine it with Relic Bearer, you combine it with Icy Manipulator. But again, um, some decks will say, okay, I want you to draw cards. For instance, when you're having that Underworld Dreams deck going, or when you have a certain combo deck going. Um, in a lot of decks, that are looking for specific pieces, Howling Mine is, is key in those decks to quickly go through your deck and find the pieces uh, that you want. So when you're playing against a Howling Mine deck, my advice will be try to get rid of it as fast as possible because it's in there for a reason. And that's also why it's here on number seven. Now let's go to number six. On number six, we have the Icy Manipulator. And the Icy Manipulator is four to cast and one tap. You may tap any land, creature, or artifact in play on either side. Now, this card is just very versatile because you can tap so much with it. There are a lot of people that um, think, I'm going to put this in just to stop a creature. Why would I maybe just choose a Mace of If over an Icy or, or choose just some, some creature removal? But the other two options, uh, tapping a land or an artifact, shouldn't be underestimated. Because what you can really do is lock your opponent or kind of like tease your opponent, making sure that he just doesn't have that extra mana that he needs by tapping a mana rock or uh, uh, tapping a land. And that can really slow your opponent down and do a lot more damage than you may think. And it's really one of those cards. I usually play one in each of my decks. But I always think maybe I, maybe I can make some more space because I would love to play with two or three of them. They're just so useful. Now, another big advantage of this artifact is, okay, the casting cost is a little bit steep. It's four, but the activation cost is quite low. It's only one to activate. And that's really, really nice. And what I like to do is cast this one with my Mishra's Workshop in turn two or maybe even turn one if I have a Mox and 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 get it going from from turn number two already as early as as turn two so icy manipulator is is one of those artifacts that i think is still a little bit underestimated by some players so that's why for me at least it's here on number six let's go to number five on number five we are finding copy artifact that's kind of the oddball out here because copy artifact obviously is an enchantment for one blue and one and the reason it's here is because as soon as it, as it enters the battlefield it becomes an artifact as well so it's an enchantment and an artifact in one you could say now again you see that same word that i use with the ice manipulator versatile so this card is very useful because you can copy cards in your own deck which is probably your a plan but you can also copy artifacts of your opponent now artifacts are being played a lot in old school magic so just having a copy artifact to copy artifacts of your opponent isn't even that bad of a plan now you can also use this um, with the mistress factory so you can turn that into an assembly work and then it, it becomes an artifact and you can actually use your copy artifact to copy it now um, obviously i've Call this a combo masterpiece because there are so many valuable artifacts that you need in certain combos um, or that you need to strengthen yourself. I always think a nice example is when you copy artifact Triskelion. Triskelion is six to cast and you can just make copies of those for just two mana uh, of input. And I really like that robots deck where you kind of have this idea of just getting as many Triskelions on the table and using animate debts to get them back again and using copy artifacts to copy them again and you end up with this endless army of robots. It's it's quite cool. It's pretty deadly to play against, but it's, it's pretty cool. Also, I love it when you can copy artifact your Chaos Orb and you can actually flip multiple times. I mean, that's pretty cool. So copy artifact, very, very powerful and it's here on this list on number five. On number four, we have a City in a Bottle. And City in a Bottle is an artifact for two. And I mean, this is just crazy. It says, all cards from the Arabian Nights expansion must be discarded from play except for City in a Bottle. And while City in a Bottle is in play, no further cards from Arabian Nights can be played. So this is just crazy. It just takes care of an entire expansion. And it takes care of an expansion that's very popular in old school. Arabian Nights obviously has some really strong creatures like Urnim Jinn, like Saranda Befreed, but it also has, of course, the most powerful land in the format, uh, which is Library of Alexandria, but it also has um, City of Brass that sees a lot of play. So worst case scenario, City in a Bottle is land removal for just two colorless mana. So, I mean, this card is awesome. It's insane. It's very, very powerful. That's why it's here on number four. Before we go into the top three, I first want to take a moment to mention some honorable mentions and I have three honorable mentions in total. Now, the first one is Candelabra of Tanis, and this 
card it used to be banned and for this one mana and um, you have this great artifact that reads x untap x separate land so obviously there's a lot of crazy shenanigans that you can do with this card in my opinion it is still underplayed maybe that's because of the, of the price tag but it should be played in more decks than just candle flare in my opinion so number two is mirror universe mirror universe is six and it reads tap sacrifice mirror universe during your upkeep and trade your number of life points with your opponent now this is just insane i mean this card is so incredibly cool uh, now the thing is of course you need to do it during your upkeep so you play this card and you have to wait an entire turn before you can use it so your opponent has a full turn to respond i kind of feel that makes this card fair it would be very unfair in my opinion if you could activate it straight away that being said old school is full of unfair cards so live with that fact i mean if you're gonna um if you're gonna get like worked up about that then you might as well stop with this format but I like it in this card that you have a full turn to respond. Another thing, and I want to ask um, you guys actually about this, is this card has an example on it. It says, for example, and it gives you an example of what happens when you activate this card. To my knowledge, this is one of the only cards in old school that has this on the card, like an example completely written out. Do you know more cards that have an example? If you do, please uh, reply if you want to, because I'm really curious to know. Now, my third honorable and last honorable mention is Felwer Stone. I kind of felt like I had to um, put a card in here from the Dark Expansion. And Felwer Stone is extremely useful for two mana. It reads tap, add one mana to your mana pool. And this mana may be of any color that any of your opponent's lands can produce. Now the cool thing here is that a lot of players in old school play with City of Brass. And that makes Felwer Stone quite useful. Because when your opponent has City of Brass out, Felwer Stone can produce every color of mana. And it doesn't even deal you a damage so it's pretty cool another point i wanted to make is this card only costs two to cast and you can use it straight away to add an extra mana to your mana pool so um, technically speaking it only costs one mana to cast because you get one mana back so that makes it even better when you consider that the casting cost is basically one so these are my honorable mentions and now let's continue to the top three on number three, we find Nevenero's Disc, or in other words, Larry Nevin's Disc. Now, this is truly a classic, obviously, four to cast, and it reads one, tap, destroys all creatures, enchantments, and artifacts in play, and Disc begins tap, but can be untapped as usual, and the Disc destroys itself when used. How cool would it be if there would be some kind of way, of course, there's Twiddle. I don't actually see a lot of decks using Twiddle and a Disc together. That kind of makes me wonder. I mean... That's pretty, pretty powerful, right? When you can combine that, that's pretty powerful. Anyway, that's just, uh, just, just a thought. Um, the thing that makes this card so strong, the reason it's so high up on this list is that it gives access to a board wipe to every single deck. So it gives access to certain um, destruction. It's, it's a um, removal masterpiece, you could say, because with a lot of colors, for instance, with red, it's difficult to get rid of enchantments. When you're playing green, it's difficult to get rid of uh, creatures and so forth, you know. Uh, when you play with a certain color, there's always a certain drawback. Now, the disc makes sure uh, that in every deck you have this removal. You can get rid of these cards. It's really like a really nice backup plan to have. You can say, okay, at least I have the disc, so I still have a way out of this. Um, besides that, I also think it's really a combo masterpiece. There are a lot of cool and nice things you can do with this. Obviously, it's being used in Troll Disco for this reason where you blow everything up and then you have a guardian beast for instance that makes sure that it comes back and all your artifacts are saved um, but you also have regeneration creatures like the thralls uh, that can regenerate themselves and stay in the game so there are a lot of uh, nice little combo things and synergies that you can do with this card and that's why it's on number two uh sorry <laughs> that's number three now let's move on to number two on number two we have soul ring so soul ring obviously a classic one mana and tap at two colors mana to your mana pool tapping this artifact can be played as an interrupt now this is just instant mana advantage and it's useful in any deck and, and those are basically the reasons why it's in here it's just a great card i don't think we really have to talk about it for too long um, it would have been on number one if not for number one because number one is just too cool so let's go to number one on number one we have conservator obviously it's the greatest artifact that ever li ever lived just for casting costs 
of a measly four and then you can pay three to prevent the loss of not one life but up to two lives so how cool is that so wow really a powerhouse kind of insane broken card should get banned should get okay obviously i'm kidding here <laughs> conservator is uh is a card that really fascinated me as a child uh when i started playing magic i actually played with conservator i thought wow man it's an artifact and look at the art it looks really cool it kind of looks like a Maya, a mayan calendar maya calendar and um it was, it was very mysterious little card so and i still think like can't we do anything with all these cards that kind of prevent life loss they're really useless aren't they like i i wish i could make a deck and make conservator work but um i'm not sure i'm not sure if that's even possible probably not so let's go to the real number one and of course on number one we find chaos orb and i mean it's the only real artifact that i could have put on this list on number one especially when you talk about old school this is old school magic two to cast one to activate and then it gets interesting you gotta flip it from a feet high and uh, when it lands it has to rotate fully by the way and when it lands on the card uh, the card is destroyed so it's really top removal it helps you to remove everything and anything you see it in any deck and if you play old school and you don't have this card yet i know you want this card because it's just so cool and did i tell you that you get to flip i mean it's really nice i mean it's just the coolest card it's on number one i don't think you can really debate that um well as, as a matter of fact if you have a different opinion please let me know in the comments below because i'm really curious about you know what artifacts are you missing in this list uh, what artifacts do you think are really way up too high what artifacts are really way up too low um let me know because this is just my personal opinion and obviously we all have opinions especially magic players especially old school magic players so please share your opinion let me know i'm just curious to hear and uh, maybe i maybe i missed one of the biggest best artifacts out there so just to summarize let's take a quick look at the top 10 so this is the whole list on number 10 i have black vice number nine manifold number eight jm day at tome number seven howling mine number six icy manipulator number five copy artifact number four city in a bottle number three never Arrows disc number two soul ring and number one chaos orb for now thank you for watching at this timmy's top 10 if you like to see more old school magic you can click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen if you want to help the channel you can like this video leave a comment let me know what you think about this list and most of all subscribe and share this content with others for now thank you for watching this episode of timmy's top 10 and see you next time <laughs>